Are you tired of making a mess all over your table, your wham bam slap mat, or whatever it might be because you're just dealing with too many damn failed prints and you want your prints to start looking like this? Well, you found the right guide. We're going to go through getting a resin printer that didn't work to actually work. And the solution is a lot easier than you may think. Let's get into it. So you got a brand new resin 3D printer, you want to print some amazing files like the Samurai from Photos Mint. But you keep getting parts that stick to your damn FEP that aren't releasing and are not looking like this. It could be mechanical, it could be software, or it could be your resin. Let's go through some troubleshooting tips and get that resin printer printing once again. What I have in front of me is an Elegoo Mars 2 Pro. It actually came into us for repair. The individual that owns it is having a terrible time getting it to run, has had no luck getting parts to stick, thought maybe the screen was bad, maybe the FEP was bad, and no, this is not the same printer from the previous resin videos, which we'll card to if you're interested. This is a printer that I've never used before, Elegoo Mars 2 Pro. Elegoo Mars 2 Pro has a monochromatic LCD screen versus the regular LCD screen that we saw on the OG Mars. If you're looking at buying a brand new resin 3D printer today, chances are it has a monochromatic screen. That means layer times can be as low as sub two seconds, which is insane. But check your resin because it might have some special settings in there that you'll need to take into account. Things like tough resins and others can absolutely require different layer heights and times. But if you're using generic resin like this Elegoo resin that I have here, two and a half seconds for a monochromatic screen is always a decent place to start. Now we'll caveat, you have to use good resin. I don't have a ton of experience with Elegoo resin and if I don't get a good print, we're going to switch over to Soraya Tech Fast Gray, a resin that I know very well. But stay away from the plant-based resins and the eco resins and all that crap. I don't like them. They don't work all of that well, not to me at least. And especially the plant-based resins over time have a tendency to crack and, well, deform. I don't like that. I want the prints to work and I want them to work the first time. First thing to take a look at is one, does the printer power up? Got the power cord right here, plug goes in from the back, power switches on the back, and as we can see, everything comes to life. Now the next thing you're going to want to check if you're not getting prints that are sticking or maybe you're getting holes in your print. Pull the top cover off, make sure everything is clean. I have pre-cleaned this printer before filming. Otherwise, if you're not sure, wear gloves. I'm gonna pull the build plate off. We're gonna set it right about there. I'm gonna move this on top of the top-down camera so that you guys can see what the screen should look like. We're gonna go into tools, going to go to exposure. We're gonna do an exposure test. That's going to verify that the screen is functional, which it says Elegoo technology, which means it is. Other thing you can do is make sure that the screen doesn't have any smaller holes in it, run a tank clean procedure, and that will verify that there is no holes in your LCD. Now I will say this FEP is a little cloudy. I'm not exactly certain why. It might warrant replacing, but it's not that bad. It's got some little gouges in it from somebody prying at it with a plastic spatula, but that's all right. I think the FEP is actually still in decent shape. Again, everything's been wiped with isopropyl alcohol. Please make sure you clean your parts with IPA. The next step here is to make sure your build plate is level. We have our build plate here. Elegoo says to level it with leveling paper. I've got some leveling paper right here, so let's go ahead and do that. If for some reason you don't have your leveling paper, feels like a cardstock would work just fine as well. Tighten that down, grab a hex wrench, link in the description. Loosen the two bolts on either side, and then we're going to go to, we're inside of tools right now, we're gonna to go to manual, we're gonna hit the home button. This is going to go ahead and home the printer all the way down, and then we can go ahead and tighten up the build plate. Now me personally, I like to level with the vat in none of this paper stuff, but I wanna do this by the book, if you will. And if the first print doesn't work, we're gonna come back and do it my way. Okay, it found home. And then we're going to make sure the build plate is reasonably straight. So let me put the printer 
straight on the top down for you. We're going to make sure the build plate is reasonably straight here. A little bit of off kilter in one direction or another. It's not going to make or break the print here. And then we can come in, snug that down on the front side as well. Really give the front one a good twist or two. Then come back to the side. Make sure that's nice and torqued down. The other thing to note, the flash drives that come with your printers are garbage. Throw them away and go buy a decent one. I just pulled one from one of our other machines. And the client did send us a file to test, but I have had no luck even on my functioning printers to get it to print. So we're going to print off a Samurai from Photos Mint. But we got to go put that on here. Let's go do that. A few moments later. And we're back. We have our file on our flash drive. We're going to go ahead and move our build plate up quite a bit. Get that out of the way. This is mine. If you're not certain your build plate is clean, go ahead and clean it with isopropyl alcohol. 91% or above is my preference. And if you are re-leveling it for the first time, or you are leveling it for the first time, I should say, make sure you go ahead and clean that thing off. Get the build plate put on there. Make sure the screws here are tight, otherwise the build plate can get messed up. I made sure the build plate was nice and flat. I used a scraper to do it. And you can see there are some lines in it from the scraper. So let's just make certain that there's really nothing on here. Paper towel, a little bit of alcohol. Go ahead and wipe the whole thing down. Oh yeah, had a little bit of metal residue on there from the build plate. This is common on brand new build plates, so always make sure you get them nice and clean. Might need to do this a couple of times, actually. Alcohol is cheap. Resin. Resin is not. Okay, I'm reasonably happy with that. The alcohol is going to flash off here in just a couple of seconds. We're going to get our safety glasses because now is when we're going to start working with raw resin. Go ahead and put those glasses on just in case there's any incidental splashes. Going to pull our resin out. Now, this is not sponsored by Elegoo. This is the resin the client provided. So, we just want to go through and make sure that everything is okay. The bottle is quite literally brand new, still in the package, which means... We have to open it. We don't need this where we're going. What we do need is to shake this a lot. So, like Sonora, shake. let's get it shaking. Time! Once your resin has been thoroughly shaken, not stirred, we're going to open her up here. It is going to have a cap brand new from the factory. We're going to use a knife to go ahead and puncture this. Now realize whatever tool you use to puncture this now has resin on it and will have to be cleaned. Think about that. Now this resin is toxic, so we wanna make sure that we set that aside so it can be cured before we go ahead and do anything. This is when you should be putting on gloves. If you don't know what you're doing and this is your first time, put on some gloves, they come with your printer. And gloves are a good thing to have. If you're looking for ones that we really like, we love chem gloves. We'll link to the video where we talk all about the gloves and some other tools that we use for resin 3D printing here. But I'm just going to go ahead and pour this in. It's a brand new bottle of resin. I've done this a billion times. We're fine. We want to get a little bit in there and similar to a bottle of wine. When you're done pouring, twist as you're pulling up. That'll keep anything from rolling down the edge. And as you can see, it is totally clean. Love that. So now all we have to do is go ahead and print our file. Again, don't use the stock SD card. We don't like those. We're going to set up a time lapse so you guys can watch this. It's not going to be a resin lapse. I don't have a camera that is compatible with resin lapse. We use DJI Osmo Pockets. And if you want to help us get nicer cameras, you can join our Patreon at patreon.com slash 3D Musketeers. We can kick a couple of bucks toward what we do here a month and help the channel grow, and if you're new here, please make sure to leave a like and get subscribed. But let's get this print rolling. Fail. I suspect that we've got some fun things going on here. So, it gives us a nice opportunity to go through and talk about how to deal with failure. The first thing you gotta do, get those safety glasses, get a pair of gloves, it's about to get messy. Now you might be wondering, Grant, How'd you find the fail? I checked it. Came out about, it was running for about three hours to a point where I could see that there is nothing clearly on the build plate. You can pause a print. However, pausing the print can 
sometimes leave lines in the print itself. So you gotta be careful about that. And since all my wham bam slap mats are being used at the moment, we're gonna use some of this uh, USPS packing material. So there is a lot of messy parts in here. So we're gonna cheat. We're gonna go to the screen clean. Gonna pull out. This is just a printed slotted spatula scraper thing. To me, these work a lot better. And this is actually the one that we would use with our Soraya Tech Fast Gray. Did make sure to clean it, but of course there is going to be some cured resin on it still. We'll make sure to cure all of that beforehand. Let's go ahead and turn on the tank clean feature. That is going to expose every pixel on the bottom of this tank, and that way we can go ahead and pull all the crap off of it. This sucks. I don't like this, and I know nobody else does either. But this is all part of the process of getting this right. I was originally concerned that we weren't going to have good adhesion because I used the leveling paper rather than my method, which is to level it right to the vat. So I'm going to do that next. Other thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to clean the build plate off. I'm going to sand it. I don't know if there's really anything that supports this theory. It's just... Something that I've always done since day one, which was sand the build plates. And gonna cheat to get a lot of that resin off because I had a video to film here. Okay, exposure is complete. Now I put a little bit of broken support in here. Hopefully be able to pull the whole... Damn it. Ah, uh, that didn't work. I was hoping that it was going to stick to things, but uh, it didn't. All right, I gotta find uh, my edge and peel up this plate. Nope. I don't like this. I'm gonna go get a funnel. We're gonna funnel this resin back into the bottle. That is no fun. Well, let's go get a funnel. And let's empty the tank. Back with a cheap funnel. Stick it in there. Grab your tank. Keep an eye on this to make sure no solids fall through. Okay, we have our tank clean, and we can clearly see on the underside here that we've got our tank clean. So we're going to try to get it up. Oh, that's, that's good. That's what the internet likes, a good peel. This, unfortunately, is completely and utterly trash. Now that we've got that, set our thing back into place here tighten our screws down now I did have raw resin on my hands so something to note but you always want to make sure that you clean off your screws as well because that can end poorly and yes for those wondering resin is toxic and resin is also really 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 messy I'm gonna go get some sandpaper we're gonna sand this down a little bit all right we got a little bit of 600 grit sandpaper which should be plenty for this a little bit of alcohol Wipe it away. Sandpaper. Still a little alcohol left on here. This is expected. Now, if you really wanted to do this right, you would end up using either a piece of granite or preferably a granite surface plate to wet sand this. And so you could basically polish it down. We're not going to worry about that. This is not an exact science, thankfully, so we're all right. Beautiful. All right, we are ready to re-level do that first, we're going to pour some resin back in here. We're going to home the printer. We're going to do the exact same thing that we did last time. But this time, because we are inside of that raw resin, we got to be careful. Because we can't touch it. So if anything becomes a problem, we actually have to manually move it with uh, a poking device. All of this gets cured inside, and then we'll toss it. Now, this can really screw you. If you do this, when you have stuff in the bottom of your vat, you can crack your screen. Something to be really conscious of. We're basically ready to start the print from my book. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and get the time lapses back up and running, and here's hoping it works. Strike two. And I'm starting to point fingers. So I've got a couple of things that have gone on here. One, still didn't stick to the build platform. But this time, we actually have a film on the build platform of cured resin. The entire build platform has cured resin on it. The tank didn't have that on there. I didn't even run a tank clean for this one. So, uh... 
pissing me off. So we're going to verify that everything looks okay. We're actually going to run the print without the build plate and with the vat in it. The vat has been cleaned. It is empty. The resin is back in the bottle. And I'm not using that anymore. I'm going to use a mix that we have from inside. This is Soraya Tech Fast Gray. And there is some Tenacious mixed in here. That is what I'm going to move to next because I have moved away from Elegoo resin years ago. Maybe I'm learning why. But I want to verify that the printer is running properly. So let's grab this part. Let's send it down. We're going to cheat. We're going to make it think that it hit its home. It didn't hit the home, but it's fine. I'm just basically forcing it to believe it hit home. So I'm going to put it under the light here. We're going to see that, okay, the screen is exposing exactly the way I expect it to. We're just going to shut it off. I wanted to make sure, because there's this weird film on the bottom of this build plate. Let me put on some gloves to make sure I don't get any contamination. And let's get that pulled off. I'm done playing with resins, I don't know. And hilariously, I use Elegoo's recommended settings. It comes right from their sheet, which we will link in the description for you. I did 35 seconds and two and a half. And I upped it to 2.7, which is normally what we run Soriatech fast at. No dice. But you can see, there's plastic on here. And I'm pretty sure that's raw. I mean, it's cured resin, but I'm pretty certain it's resin. And there is no easy way to get this off. Now, I've got a little bit of my sandpaper left here, but I don't think that's going to... Well, I guess it does. Let me work on getting this clean. We'll be right back. Couple scratches of the bottom of the build plate. As far as I can tell, don't really impede any of the motion of the machine. Okay, and let's get some resin in there. Again, this is Soraya Tech Fast Gray mixed with a little bit of Tenacious. This is our uh, our house dressing, if you will. I will say the smells of these resins are very different. I've always not minded Soraya Tech resin. It doesn't smell bad. I don't really mind the smell, but that Elegoo resin, that stuff was pungent. Really, really rough. So put that there. Soraya Tech does not pay us. Uh, hashtag not sponsored. The bed looks okay, but let's go ahead and re-level it just for good measure. I forget how much nicer smelling Sarai takes. God, it's such a better smell. And I know that's a weird thing to state, but if you're going to be around it all the time, the smell is not fun. Uh, it's why the Mars 2 Pro comes with a, a gasket, and it's why we have VOC filters in our main office. I regrettably don't have them out here on set so it's gonna get a little nasty but i'm not gonna be out here for this whole print so it's fine Alrighty, same deal we're gonna print the exact same file and i'm gonna verify that my settings are all there we're gonna let this ride for a little bit we'll know within the first couple layers of where it's at so we're gonna let it do a couple layers then we're gonna check it i heard a bit of appeal that's good I i'm hearing it so what i'm gonna do we're down six layers now so i'm gonna hit the pause button at layer six it's gonna start doing full speed layers so we're gonna pull it out we're gonna take a look make sure there's stuff stuck to the build plate if there is we're gonna set the time lapses up and get things moving if there isn't stuff stuck to the build plate we're gonna go back and try other stuff boom it's stuck to the build plate it's like good resin fucking matters let's go let's go I'm excited about resin. My back hurts, but I'm excited. Fuck yeah. Fuck you, Elegoo. Your resin sucks. Your printers are good. Your resin sucks. Moving on. Hit the time lapse. <laughs> okay, so I was right. This resin, pretty much garbage. Worked perfectly fine with the Soraya Tech. Here, I'm going to show you guys. Take a look. One of the great things about having gimbal mounted cameras is I can do things where regular cameras can't go. Check that out. You can see the bottom layers all stuck to the build plate. They're all there. We're gonna hit play, we're gonna let this thing go again. I'm gonna set up my time lapses, we'll be back. There you have it, third time's a charm. Who knew that just replacing the resin was the right move? This machine is mechanically fine. It is 
totally fine on its files as well. Of course, we put brand new data on there, but this is the exact same file with the exact same cure times that we ran with the Elegoo resin, which based on Elegoo settings should work just fine. So something is clearly wrong here. We could go through and calibrate everything, but realistically for me and probably for you, it's time to get a resin that you know will work. We use Soraya Tech Fast here at 3D Musketeers. We do mix in some Tenacious, which is their flexible. It gives the prints a little bit more dexterity in the long run from UV light exposure, but you can run it straight as it is. And no, Soraya Tech doesn't pay me, and neither does Elegoo, at least at the time of filming. We just firmly believe that sometimes you have to get the right product for the right job. And unfortunately, this Elegoo standard resin just wasn't working for us. The Soraya Tech Fast worked to treat the first time, which is what I appreciate about it. When we were struggling with this resin, I said, wait a minute, I've got other stuff. Let me go get a better bottle, poured it in, tried it, and it worked just fine. And maybe you saw it on the time lapse. Maybe it was completely out of focus because I suck at setting things up with a screen that is quite literally one inch square. But you know, you gotta work with what you got. Sometimes it is a little bit more complicated and yet easier than you might think. Materials is a very easy thing to point fingers at. That is not always the correct answer. So the steps to go if you are having a hard time resin printing is one, empty your vat. Make sure there is no raw resin stuck to your FEP. Make sure your FEP is not punctured, not overly scratched, not overly cloudy, and not damaged in any hardcore way. This one's got a couple little lines in it, but it was totally fine, clearly. Next, level your build plate. If you want to, you can use leveling paper that the machines come with, or you can go ahead and level it to the FEP like I do. Now, I don't condone this act. I've just been doing it for years and I'm comfortable with the risk that we're taking. Because if there is any cured resin in your vat that is free floating or any cured resin that is between your FEP and your screen and you don't have these bolts loose enough, you're going to smash cured resin into your very delicate monochromatic LCD screen that is likely going to cause it to fail. You don't want to do that. And that's why the leveling paper exists. But to me, I want to level exactly to where my FEP is, and it seems to work. We did that for both of these two test prints that did ultimately fail. And while we could go through and do test prints from Table Flip Foundry, Soraya Tech, and others that have wonderful calibration models, this made the most sense to us, which was to use a known material that we use often that works, and that is Soraya Tech Fast Gray with a little bit of tenacious mix in there to keep it, you know, a little bit less brittle. And no, I'm not paid by any of the companies here today. In fact, I am self-sponsored by my own company, 3D Musketeers. And if you are looking to get resin prints and you're having a hard time, maybe you've decided this industry isn't for you on a DIY solution. Hey, you can hit us up. 3dmusketeers.com links will be down below. We understand that resin printing is not the easiest thing on the planet, and this stuff is incredibly dangerous because remember, resin is toxic and it doesn't get better with age. It's not like a fine wine, this stuff continually sucks. And we can go put this outside and it will likely start to smoke because of how quickly it is going to cure out in the Florida sun. But the nice thing is, when you run known material with known settings, everything works. Now I will state something to note about the Elegoo bottles. They say on here to use a 60 second exposure for your bottom layers and eight seconds for your nominal exposure. That is incorrect. Do not do that unless you have an LCD resin 3D printer and not a monochromatic LCD resin 3D printer. If you have something that is a Mars 2 Pro, a Mars 3, a Saturn, a Photon S, I don't think the original Photon was monochromatic, it is pretty easy to tell. The machine will likely tell you somewhere in its documentation that it is monochromatic. You're going to want to run around two and a half seconds, which is what we tried. It didn't work. So we went to 2.7 seconds, which is normally what we run the Soraya Tech Fast Resin at. And it still did not work. It did not cure to the build plate itself. And again, you can run all the tests you want to try to get the resin dialed in. But truth be told, I don't want to. And I believe that it's worth paying extra money for better materials. Ultimately, these two are only a couple dollars away from each other at the same volume. Soraya Tech normally being a couple of bucks more expensive than Elegoo branded resin. 
and to me it just works better. It also smells way better. One thing that I can complain about this Mars 2 Pro is it has a ventilation fan in it that just pushes the fumes into the room that you're working in. Normally we can leave our resin 3D printers on at all times and they don't smell because the original Marses don't have the fan in there. And if you wanted to, you can take it apart and deactivate the fan. Not that it's all that difficult. These printers are pretty basic on the inside. This is an original Mars taken apart, but you shouldn't have to. So always make sure you have good ventilation when working around resin 3D printers. Make sure you're wearing your safety glasses and glove up for safety because, well, I don't want you to get chemical burns. So where the hell does this leave us? It leaves us with resin that we just don't ultimately like. And the client themselves said they've tried, they've tried, they've tried, they've tried. They went through an entire 500 milliliter bottle of resin for nothing but fails. And I said, huh, maybe it's something mechanical. I never once thought that the resin could be the culprit itself. And lo and behold, it absolutely was. I put in known good resin that I literally, this is the exact bottle that we're using in our print farm right now in our Elegoo Saturns. We have a lot of these bottles. Hi, Soraya Tech, sponsor me. Please, it's expensive, but please. And it just worked the first freaking time. Exact same settings, changed literally nothing. And we have a gorgeous piece that we can show you guys. If we don't touch anything that's had raw resin on it, and there are no resin drips that get on our hands, we're totally safe. I've done this enough times that I am comfortable with it. Don't try this at home, make sure you wear gloves. But there you go, the model is absolutely beautiful. This model from Photos Mint, A+. We're gonna get this thing cleaned up and it's going to go in my little sample bin. But that's kind of the solution here, right? If you're having problems with your printer, check your FEP sheet for any excess damage or wear. Check your build plate, make sure it is clean. If it is too smooth, go ahead and grab some 600 grit, sand that bad girl down, clean it off with isopropyl alcohol until what you're wiping is clean. You all should know this technique by now. And then go ahead and re-level your build plate. You can use the paper that it comes with, or you can do our method. But again, make sure everything is clean around your screen to make sure that you're not going to crack it in the process. Of course, loosen the two nuts. That's really all I got for you guys today. Let me know if you think I did a good job on this. I know this solution is not exactly the one most people were looking for. It wasn't the one that I was expecting either, but it's the one that we came upon. And yes, we could sit here for hours and run test print after test print after test print after test print, but ultimately time is money and it is a lot easier to use a known good resin like Soraya Tech Fast over trying to tune in something that I have very little experience with. If you have experience with this resin, post your settings in the comments down below. I'd love to try it, before we get this printer back to the client, because I think he's gonna come and grab it on Thursday or Friday, and this video is coming out on Wednesday. That's all I got for you guys on this one. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones, wear safety glasses and gloves where appropriate, resin is toxic, and keep making awesome. Have a good one. One simple resin hack that will change your life. Don't use that one. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you love making a mess with toxic chemicals, make sure you leave the video a like. I want to give a massive thank you to all of our Patreon supporters and YouTube channel members whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. If you want to get your name amongst the elite group of musketeers, you can do so at patreon.com slash 3D musketeers to get a couple of bucks toward that creator fund every month or click the join link right below me. We're coming up on April so now is the right time to join. Join right at the beginning of the month, especially with Patreon, because they charge you on the first of the month. So now is the great time to go find all those creators that you want to support. Right below me will be the entire resin series that we've done here on YouTube. And next to that will be the resin maintenance video that we did to go through and make sure that your resin printer is keeping up with the Joneses. I will see you guys in those comments. And in the next one, take care.